Hey folks, just shooting a video today because I have a bunch of stuff that I picked up at a thrift shop. Um, it was a thrift shop that I'd never been in before and I found quite a bit of good stuff. Um, got some DVDs, some CDs, and some vinyl to show. Let's kick it off with the DVDs. They're all music related. Uh, first one, Ryman Gospel uh, Reunion. I think this was shot back in the mid 90s, maybe 95. Gaither Gospel Series. Um, picked it up first thinking, you know, hey, Russ Taft might be on this uh, since he's a, pretty much a regular. But then I realized that maybe it. The, the time frame is not right. Uh, but I got to looking. This is the back of it. Um, I got to looking, and Russ may not be on here, but another one of my favorites, Mylon Lefevre, is singing on, on this DVD. Uh, he's doing the hymn without him. And that was the the song that really made Mylon's career. Uh, Mylon is probably best remembered as a Christian rocker, but when he was young, he came up in a Southern Gospel group. It was his family's group, the Singing Lefevers. And when he was sixteen or seventeen. He wrote the hymn without him, and Elvis Presley recorded it, and a bunch of other people recorded it, but I think Elvis in particular, his recording of it generated a lot of money for that, for a young Milan Lefevre. Milan would go on into the uh, psychedelic, early psychedelic 70s, and, and uh, kind of get lost, lose himself a little bit in drugs. Um, but then, I think around 77, a, a heart attack kind of brought him back to his faith, and, and uh, it was from there he would go on to uh, form Milan and Broken Heart, which is one of the great Christian rock bands of the 80s, late 70s and 80s. Uh, saw him many times, always a great show, but... Uh, I, I do particularly love that hymn without him, and um, so I was glad to pick this up. Also on the Gaither Gospel series, a tribute to George Younts. And um, George Younts, I'm not that familiar with, um, with his work, but I plan on rectifying that. He's... A legendary bass singer for the cathedrals and um, I need to get to know his work <laughs> so I picked this up for two bucks I thought that was a, a great thing absolutely legendary singer um, the next two look like they Came out of a series. This is uh, country, country's family reunion gospel. Uh, don't know a lot of the artists on here, but Wanda Jackson, Charlie Leuven, and Kitty Wells are all on here, and so I snatched this up. It's a two disc, two DVD set. set. And then they had stories from the golden age of country music. It says featuring stories of Hank Williams Jr., Patsy Cline, Farron Young, and Elvis. So I thought those would all make good additions to my my uh, video collection, music video collection. 
All right, so here, let's get started on the CDs. They were, I, she let me see them all as I was, she was ringing them up, so they all looked good. Van Morrison, Moon Dance. Like Van Morrison. Let's see here. Then uh, Simon and Garfunkel, the concert in Central Park. It says on here that it's a two record set on one compact disc. And um, I guess it's pretty old, kind of uh, a no frills. Well, the book, booklet has some thickness to it. The booklet has got some was nicely done. Show you a few pictures. So, I'm not a huge Simon Garfunkel fan, but I felt like, you know, this, I need to, there, there's somebody I want to learn a little bit more about their music. Then, I picked up these two. These are um, this is the the band, the Last Waltz. It's a specially priced three record set on two compact discs. But there's a lot of good people on these. Kind of packaging and all that. It's kind of plain Jane. Uh, the booklets again, though, do have have some thickness to them. Hadn't really looked at the booklets. Looks like it's got uh, pictures and some of the people that were there, and some uh, album credits. So I do have the, the DVD last waltz as well. Alright, and then finally the five blind boys of Alabama featuring Clarence Fountain. Very excited about giving this a spin. I just can't can't go wrong with the Blind Boys of Alabama. And finally on the the CDs, I got this. And she she was charging me a dollar per CD, but when it came to this one, she didn't charge me near that. Um, Star Wars, the original radio drama. Since I'm a big sci-fi nerd, this was great. Um, according to the box, uh, it stars uh, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker and Anthony Daniels as 3PO. Featuring the Oscar-winning movie, movie music by John Williams, performed by the London Symphony Orchestra. Okay, so I have not listened to these yet. But it's like seven disc. I think I paid five for the whole thing. Whoops. Of course, it folds out, and there are two of these big fat boys in, a, in the box. Now, on to the vinyl. Now, here's, here's, it was a little frustrating because she's got this couple of huge racks in the back that have old records on them, and I'm thinking that 90% of it's garbage, but you never know. There might be some good albums mixed in there somewhere, but she had stuff blocking it, and I, I never could get back to 
to see what she had there. But she did mention, I've got some records in a tub up here. And then she said, now these are the good, these are good records and I want $3 a piece for them. I thought, well, let's see what she's got. So I went back and yeah, <laughs> I found a whole stack for the three, three bucks. Uh, first up, this is uh, David Bowie. Um, the album name. Probably all the Bowie fans are screaming tonight. It does have a seam split, but it was sealed when I got it. Um, I thought I, I did pop it open and wash it so that I can. I plan on giving this a spin. I'm not too familiar with his music, so. Um, here, oh. Well, this is something I didn't notice when I pulled it out to wash it. It has a sticker, a David Bowie sticker. And then, of course, it's on EMI America. So I look forward to, to giving that a listen. Uh, let's see here. Then I've got uh, Bob Seger. The Silver Bullet Band, Night Moves. Of course, original, original outer sleeve that's got the lyrics on one side and the picture on the other. Uh, on capital. That one cleaned up nicely. I will say that some of the records were dirtier than others and there were a few that that gave me pause just because it seemed like they had they had just an, they just weren't totally they didn't look totally clean but but I think most everything that I picked out I cherry picked a little bit and I think everything that I got uh, looked good once I washed it Sticks Equinox Original outer sleeve. Of course, on the AM label. I, I like sticks, so I was pleased with that. And I like this band too. This was this is I don't have a whole lot of their stuff, but this was so big when I was in high school. Yes. Nine one five oh two. Nine oh one. Oh wow. Nine nine oh one two five. Right. Well I was reading it off the back and I was reading the first line. And then the second. <laughs> oh, I thought those numbers don't sound right. <laughs> so, this is one of the better. Uh, you can see a little bit of a seam split there with the original liner. That doesn't bother me too much because I I generally move my vinyl. Once I've spun it, I move it to a new, to a new liner. And uh, on the Echo label, I'll move it to a new liner and put just stick the uh, I stick the inner sleeves back in. So however damaged they are, they don't get any further damaged. Um, 
Yeah, for no, if they don't serve any other function, they'll serve as a lyric sheet. Uh, the doors, um, alive, alive. She cried. This is the first doors anything I've ever had. Again, original ladder sleeve. On Electra. So I have no clue how big of an album this was for the doors, but I thought thought I would give them a try. Now, I'm very familiar with this next artist, Bruce Springsteen, Darkness on the Edge of Town. Very pleased with this pickup. It does have the uh, lyric sheet. Original outer sleeve. It's got a picture on the other side. Of course, on Columbia. So, and then Waylon Jennings' Greatest Hits. I have my suspicions this isn't the original liner. Could be, but it, of course it is on the custom labels on RCA. Cover covers in really good shape. Yeah, I was very pleased at finding this. This next one I've never seen before. It's in really good shape. Uh, wow, the Doobie Brothers. Uh, forever um, farewell tour. Very excited about picking this up. It's a two, two LP set. There's the gatefold. Very cool. Does have the original inner sleeves. They've got some seam splits, but like I said, I'll move. I'll move those to. Uh, to my own sleeves and just stick the, the original ones back in the cover. But I do like the Doobie Brothers. I'm a Michael McDonald fan. And uh, I thought that was really cool because I don't think I've ever seen that album before. Now remember, and, and I'll tell you this, this is one of two, two LP so that I picked it. She charged me three dollars, even for the double, double LPs, which means yeah, I paid three dollars for that. I paid three dollars for this. Derek and the Dominoes. Nice gatefold. Um, couldn't believe that. I picked this up for three bucks. Vinyl looks good on RSO. It's kind of funny. It's hard for me to take the RSO label, take the RSO label seriously because one because it has that. Well, I guess it's not really a cow, is it? Because it's got horns. I don't know what this animal is, but that's also the same label 
when I was a little kid, I had a 45. It was the only disco song I really liked. It was Rick D's Disco Duck. Um, and it was on that label with that crazy looking animal on it. And so now when I see other serious albums with that label, it's, it's just seems odd to me because I always associate that that label with Disco Duck. Oh yeah, three dollars for this. Led Zeppelin four. My first Led Zeppelin vinyl. I I haven't had much of Zeppelin over the years. I picked up some of their CDs recently. There, this, this, uh, I guess this is original outer sleeve, but it's a little beat up. Of course, on the Atlantic. Uh, Atlantic label. I don't know why I'm going into so much depth with, with this album. I'm sure most of the people in the VC have, uh, I've had this album. Probably still do. Probably multiple copies. My first time with it, though. Uh, let's see. Well, John Cougar Mellencamp. Uh huh. Love this album. Um, of course, I I have spun it see the label kind of an odd label kind of surprised me a little bit when I pulled it out um, what is that Riva is the label never really heard of that before all right now the final two are from the same band remember three bucks a piece Rush Hemispheres. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if this is an original outer sleeve or doesn't, doesn't look like it. It's, I can't see them putting it in a plain sleeve when. They went to so much trouble on the uh, custom inner ring. That's okay at three bucks. I'm not going to gripe. And then for three dollars, Rush 2112. The the cover's a little. Uh, not bad on the uh, on the ring wear, but you can if you look at it up close like I am, you can see little flaws, imperfections. But still, what are you gonna say for three bucks? Oh yeah. There's the vinyl. So, and this is my first rush on vinyl. And I've really been getting into them lately, so I was ecstatic. When I, I think the, when I realized that this uh, box would have something was when I saw the Led Zeppelin. And then the, the rush kind of kind of topped it all off for me so we're getting kind of long here so i'm gonna wrap it up i hope everyone's doing well um hope you're having a good lead up to christmas and i'm planning on going to church here in just a little bit we're having our annual uh old louisville christmas where we'll gather at the church and sing christmas songs um 
So, hope you're having a good day, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye, folks.